As you may or may not know, there are now two options for configuring your Spring Boot applications. You can either use application properties or you can use application.yaml, which of course begs the question, what's the difference between the two of them and which one should you be using? Now, that question would be easy to answer if all things were equal, but unfortunately they're not. YAML is definitely where the push is, but there are some things that YAML doesn't support, specifically the property source annotation. And if that's something that you need, well, then the YAML file is something that you can't use. Hi, I'm Cameron McKenzie. I'm the editor-in-chief over at theserverside.com, and I have to be one of the world's biggest advocates for Spring and Spring Boot. And I'm also a big fan of DevOps tools that use YAML configuration. So I've always been one of the early adopters of YAML in my Spring Boot applications. Now, I will say there is a lot of misinformation on YAML out there. There's a lot of people saying that, oh, you can do this with YAML, but you can't do that with the properties file. That is all FUD. And that's why I put this video together. I want to clear up the FUD. I want to show you the difference between an applications property file and an applications.yaml file and give you all the information that you need to make the right decision on which one to choose. So here's a Spring Boot application that I put together in a previous tutorial on application.properties. And you can see that in that resources folder, I've actually got two files, application.properties and application.yaml. That's the first thing you need to know in this properties versus YAML in Spring Boot debate. You can actually have both of them in the same project. They can work together. That's fine. The only rule is if there's a conflicting property between the properties file and the YAML file, the property in the dot properties file wins. Now let's take a look at both of these properties because I've actually set this up so that the settings in the YAML file, which is on the left over there, all match the settings in the YAML file on the right. So you can see the server port is set to 80 Wayne's Gretzky on line two on the left. It's 80 Wayne Gretzky on line two on the right. We've got an application name on the left, my YAML app name. We've got my property app name on the right on line number three. We've set some dev tools property. We've set some favorite property on the right hand side. You can see that my favorite actor is Bill Shatner and on the left hand side, well, my favorite actor is listed as Shatner on line 23. So it's all the same data. Some of the data in application properties is just written out slightly differently so that when I run an application and test everything that I can tell what's coming from where. But um, that's the basic idea. Everything that you can do with an application properties file, you can do with an application.yaml file. Almost. But for the most part here, you can see the, the key differences. Really, the application.yaml file is just darn easier to read. It's hierarchical, it is simpler. We don't have words constantly repeated, like over here, favorite.ca, favorite.ca, favorite.ca. Over on the, the left-hand side, line 15 and 16, just cover that out once and then we just say our favorite Canadian city, food, band, artist, and sport. It's all very simple. It's all very straightforward. So the question is, which one do you like better? Which one do you think looks better? And the answer to that question is the one on the left. It's not subjective. I'm telling you, the YAML file looks better. The YAML file is also a superset of JSON now. So you know, it becomes JSON compatible. And YAML is the language of DevOps, right? Your Docker config files are configured in YAML. Kubernetes is configured in YAML. Going forward, the configuration of choice should be YAML. Now, online, when you start going into this debate about YAML versus properties files, you will see a bunch of misinformation. People will say that um, with YAML files, it's better because you can configure lists in your property file. Well, you know, over here on the right hand side, line 13, 14, 15, and 16, that all configures a list. Well, they say, well, you know, with a YAML file, uh, you can configure lists with properties in it. Uh, 17 and 18 on the right hand side configures a, a list of invention objects. They say, oh, you can use hash maps in YAML file. And you can see on the left hand side, 
I've set up some code to configure a hash map for popular Canadian attractions. On Ontario, it's Niagara, and Alberta, it's Banff, and for BC, it's the eastbound Trans Canada to Alberta. Um, same thing, 19, 20, and 21 on the right hand side. So, a lot of the stuff that people say is compelling reasons to use YAML. You know, you can configure things, you can set things up in terms of maps, lists, objects. Absolutely not true. You can do it in both of them. In fact, the, the code on the right comes from a tutorial I did in 2018. So, you've been able to do it in properties files for a long time. Uh, another cool thing that you can do with YAML files is if you have multiple profiles, you can actually put the profile information for each profile into uh, the same file. So normally you would have application-dev.properties and application-prod.properties. Well, with a YAML file, you can actually have spring config activate on profile dev, and that defines properties for the dev profile, lines 37 to 42 there. A lot of people say that's a compelling reason to use YAML, but I hate to break it to you. Do the same thing with an application properties file right there, lines 23 to 26 accomplishes the exact same thing. And, you know, I'm going to run this program. So uh, I do have application properties and I do have uh, application.yaml. I've also got a little application here. Let me see if I can open up this code. This application here has something called favorite things that pulls in all of the different properties from that file. It pulls in a list, a list of inventions, a double string map along with the sport and the artist. We then run this application, auto wire in that configured class and then print out the artist that I love, my favorite actor, my favorite inventions and all the attractions. Now, if I run this and say run as a Java application, right now what's gonna get printed out is Ridley Bent, Bill Shatner, Insulin for Diabetes and Niagara Banff and Trans Canada Highway. All of those come from the application dot properties file emphasizing and you can see Bill Shatner and Ridley Bent is in the application dot properties file you can see that it's actually just Shatner there in the YAML file you open up that application properties file and you can see in application dot properties we have the full name and that is Bill Shatner so I just want to emphasize the application dot property file will always override the YAML file. Now, if I was to delete that and get rid of all of the configuration in the application properties, instead of Bill Shatner and insulin for diabetes, if I was to run this again, run as a Java application. So William Shatner and insulin for diabetes, we would see a slightly different output, right? Shatner and insulin, because in the YAML file, I didn't print out the full name and I didn't say insulin for diabetes, right? So that's the how you know the, the two of them are acting differently. But as I said, the values in both of those are getting sent into a list or a map or even properties. That is not a difference. And the ability to set up multiple profiles is not a difference as well. So don't believe what you read on the internet is probably what I'm saying here. Now, what is the difference? Here it is. The thing that your YAML file can't do is handle property source annotations. You can see at line 11, I'm trying to bring in this favorites.yaml file. And in this favorites.yaml file, I got a, a reference to my favorite wrapper, Maestro Fresh Wes. And I want to print that out in my code. And so normally what you would do if you have some supplemental properties, you reference the property file with the property source annotation and you create a, a property here and throw the value annotation on top of it. In this case, I want, uh, what is it I want? I want uh, to pull in a debug, but favorite.ca.wrapper. And so that should field inject the wrapper into that property there. And I should be able to come down here and say system.out.println wrapper, right? And that should print out Maestro Fresh West because that is in my favorites.yaml file. Now, by the way, if it's not, if it doesn't find it, it'll trigger a null pointer exception. So you can put 
defaults in here. So uh, instead of letting my backbone slide, if we can't find the favorite YAML file, maybe we will take a look at an informer with snow. Okay. Let's see if this works. If this runs and says Maestro Fresh Wes, then the property source annotation is working and it is pulling information from that favorites folder. If it prints out snow, it didn't work and this is a major shortcoming of YAML files. Okay, so run as a Java application. Let's see what happens. Boom, we get snow. So that is one of the shortcomings. That is one of the drawbacks of using YAML files. You can't use that property source annotation. And that's a fairly big deal. Okay, so that is a fairly big deal. Now there is a, a workaround. One of the things you can do is in your application properties file, you can do an import, right? You can say spring config import and then point to other configuration files. So here I'm gonna say, when we run, let's import that YAML file. Now this will be a global import and it'll be available everywhere. Like with, with that property source, you can make that specific to a class. So if you've got properties only one class needs, then it's useful because you're limiting the, the access in that way. This way it'll make it global for applications. But after doing this, let's run our application. And all of a sudden we are conducting things. And Maestro Fresh West is now printing out. Oh boy, did I spell that incorrectly? That is disrespectful to the Maestro. Let me run that again. Run as a Java application. And there we see. We're conducting things, letting our backbone slide. Poetry is black. Maestro Fresh West is the man. Okay, and there you go. Now let me just cue this up one last time. There is the application properties, and here is the application YAML file, just so you can see them. Once again, give them a little comparison and figure out which one you like more. As I said, for the most part, they're different, but they're the same. Uh, the only thing that I can figure out that's different between them is that support for a property source. Some people have said UTF-8 mode is only supported in YAML, but... I don't know, I thought I could see some configurations that makes that possible in application properties too. So as I said, run tests, figure it out, borrow this code. Uh, if there's some other differences, please, if there's something I missed, let me know in the comments and I'm happy to correct this. But um, for me, it doesn't seem like there's a, a huge difference. I like YAML. I push towards YAML, um, but I like to be aware of that limitation. Okay, so there you go. Um, you know, by the way, if you enjoyed this tutorial, why don't you head over to the serverside.com. I'm the editor in chief over there. We've got lots of great tutorials on Spring, Spring Boot, DevOps, Java, Git, you name it. Um, if you're interested in my personal antics, follow me on Twitter. Send me a message over there at CameronMCNZ. Uh, I do have a couple of books, Hibernate Made Easy, What is WebSphere? Java certification guide from 20 years ago, uh, and also Darcy DeClute's Scrum Master certification guide. I helped do some final edits on that. A lot of people are purchasing that and scoring 100% of the Scrum Master certification exam. So if you're agile and working with Scrum and you want to advance your career, I highly recommend that. And then finally, if you're watching this on YouTube, why don't you subscribe on YouTube?